How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome to another episode of Don't Starve Together Mod Light. Today we are going to be taking a look at three mods that I've been playing around with in the past week or so. first one we're going to be taking a look at here, of course, is the Pickles first person mod. I think at this point, pretty much everyone has tried it out by now, but it's certainly possible you're seeing this video sometime in the future and you have not seen this mod promoted on the Steam Workshop yet. So for those uninitiated, Pickles first person mod by Pickle Player promises to show you the world in first person. You can use the mouse to control the camera. You can use the scroll wheel to scroll through your inventory and the E and R keys to select inventory items. And of course, while you can have this mod enabled and view the world in first person, it is certainly possible to switch back to normal view at any time. So you don't have to quit the game and go back to the main menu. So I'm just going to go here and do a brief demonstration on some of the more interesting aspects of this mod. Okay, so here we are in a world and everything looks fairly standard, but if we press escape and then we click switch camera, we are now in first person mode. And you'll notice there has been a new skybox included for the world, so it doesn't look nearly as drab. We're currently in a desert, but we're just moving around here, and as you can see there is a little selection tile in front of us, so if we approach these twigs here and we click on them, Wilson will go ahead and pick it up. There's also a weapon animation, so in other words, like here we are selected over the handbat, you can see I can select things in my inventory by scrolling over them. I can scroll over the hambat and uh, press E to equip it, or like I can scroll over the walking cane, press E to equip. This is a pretty standard uh, menu selection for most first person survival type games. If you're wondering what the animation there is in front of me, it's the shadows from my uh, walking cane. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't include the skinned graphic for it, even though this is the skinned walking cane, so that's like one of those small things. Uh, but right here is the handbat, and as you can see, in the distance, there looms a dragonfly. Now, actually fighting things in this perspective can prove to be a bit challenging, as you might see here. Uh, there is really no guaranteeing that, holy crap, you'll be able to do any sort of meaningful combat in this game. But uh, in this perspective, there are some hounds over there. I think oh, we, still, we still have the dragonfly on our tail. I think this could make combat a lot, <laughs> a lot different. Oh! What the, what's after us? Okay, it's just a hound at this point. We should be able to take this one out. What do you say? Ah, well, kiting for the win. Okay, we got two hits in there. Get a third hit in. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> We've successfully killed one hound. Now, if only I can pick up the meat. There we go. So that's what it's like fighting in first person mode, but you might be wondering what is it like to actually build like this? And for that, we'll need to enable the crafting menu. Now the crafting menu by default is disabled because you control the way your character looks using the mouse, right? You don't see my mouse cursor on the screen anymore. So to get the crafting menu enabled, we're going to have to press Q, then we can hover over it. Unfortunately, we have another dog to deal with here. Gotta get out of this area. There's too many hounds. Okay, so here we are, we're safe. As I mentioned, you need to press Q to open up the crafting menu. And this will enable us to use the mouse without moving the camera. So, like, let's say we wanted to place a campfire here. Uh, this is what placement looks like in first-person mode. So you're not going to get a very comprehensive overview of your base before you're able to place stuff. But it's most certainly more functional than a lot of the other first-person mods that I've seen for the game in this regard. Uh... Like, like just simply being able to move the camera around with your mouse cursor instead of needing to use the uh, keys to do it, like the Q and R or Q and E keys to do that. You might be wondering, like, placing crockpots. Things can get a little scary in this perspective, I have to admit. You can open your crockpot like this and you'll see it brings up right away. It brings up the menus and everything so that way you can uh, put your meat in and whatnot with the mouse, right? You don't need to worry about using the menu to select and put food inside the crock pots and whatnot. So a lot of thought actually went into this. And as a matter of fact, we are quite hungry right now. I think one of the most important things with this is you're actually going to need to navigate using the mini map a lot more because when you're in this kind of perspective, it's difficult to get your bearings and really appreciate where you are. Um, like right here, you can walk to the edge of the ocean and see the water, but like the idea that you'll be able to identify landmarks is uh, a, a little bit far-fetched, I think. So you'll most certainly be res resorting to the minimap, and you also can't walk. click to walk now. So if you ever get tired of the first person mode, since it is a client side mod, you can just press escape and click that switch camera. And here we are back again as our usual selves. Okay, the next mod we're going to be taking a look at here is the snow tile disabler by 
Carl's Elf. This mod removes the snow for performance and logistical reasons, e.g. building a base. Uh, you can configure the mod for the intensity of snow allowed. I have it set to more currently, but there are other options like some, none, lots, and all. Basically what this mod does is it can lessen the intensity of the snow seen on the ground during the winter season. So let's take a brief look at that. As I said before, I've sort of split it midway. So it's going to be the kind of snow you would see during a winter start. Okay, so here you can see we are in a world during winter. It's currently snowing out. I have built the rainometer as well as the thermal measure to show you that both we are experiencing quite a bit of precipitation currently and the temperature is low enough for it to snow quite significantly. It's been snowing now for I would say a day and a half and this is the total accumulation of the amount of snow that we have and as you can see here it's still reasonable enough to be able to dig up the tiles and be able to place them for building bases as well as still have the roads visible enough to trace them while walking around during the winter, which is like a common problem that a lot of people have when the snow is a lot more significant. So like you can have your snow here, but at the same time it doesn't have to be overbearing. Another thing that snow apparently causes some performance issues for people who are running systems that are a little bit less powerful, and apparently by disabling the snow effects completely, you could improve your overall performance. I'm a little bit hazy on this, so if I got something wrong it's most certainly possible, but I've seen it being reported that is the case. Uh, for me, I personally like to split it a little bit down the line here, and this might actually become a new favorite personal client side mod because uh, this will allow you to still build your base while at the same time maintaining a very wintry theme, right? This does not look out of place necessarily for winter, it's just not overdoing winter for me graphically, in my opinion. Okay, the last mod we are going to be looking at here today is called Automatic Health Adjust by Serpens. This mod automatically adjusts the health of mobs depending upon the number of active players on the server. Default is DS values for one player and DST values for six players. Uh, you can configure the mod. There are quite a few different configurations available here for pretty much every mob available in the game. I haven't gone through all of them, but it seems pretty extensive. So we're just going to jump quickly into a scenario here and I'm going to briefly demonstrate it using the epic boss health bar so you will be able to see firsthand the reduction in health on these bosses. So here you can see with the dragonfly we have a health, she has a health bar of 3,500 and it only takes a few hits here to actually bring her down to the point at which she needs to start spawning larvae. Now while I can solo her without this reduction in health, I can see this being useful for players who just want to play the games by themselves without being completely aggravated by the amount of time it would normally take you to defeat dragonfly by yourself. I'm also going to briefly demonstrate the Bee Queen here, so you'll see that she has 3000 health now instead of her usual 22,500 health. Once again, making this a much less tedious fight to complete. So as you can see here, this mod can make defeating bosses much more tolerable by yourself, especially if you're not somebody who lives for those fights and merely sees them as a chore to be done in order to progress. But this mod is by no means limited to only bosses as demonstrated here in the configuration. Pretty much every mob has been tweaked to be more equitable. In addition to this, the mod itself is dependent upon the number of players per shard and not per overall world. So in other words, if you're fighting by yourself down in the caves while the rest of your team is above ground, you'll still be enjoying the health stats as if you were playing by yourself because you are alone on that shard. But that's going to do it for today. As always, there will be links to the mods I demonstrated in the description below this video. So if any looked interesting, go ahead and check them out. If you enjoyed it, be sure to thank the author for taking the time to create and share it with us. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.